When most people think about business and employment, they usually consider it from an economic perspective. They think about their jobs, their wages, their income, and whether or not they have enough cash to meet life's basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, and transportation. That's certainly an important perspective, but most po people don't realize that employment and income are also about health, the health of individuals, families, and communities. Income is the greatest predictor of health of individuals and the health of a community. And income is related to having a job and what that job pays. States that have a strong economy, low levels of unemployment, and good wages are also the healthiest. Minnesota is a great example of this, a healthy state with a healthy economy. But that didn't happen by accident. It got that way through some forward-thinking public policies and a variety of strategic public and private investments. But with the world's economy and Minnesota's population changing rapidly, Minnesota's status is not guaranteed. To retain its position, Minnesota will need to be creative and innovative in its policies and investments and its employment and economic opportunities. We'll talk about Minnesota's economic risks and opportunities on today's episode of A Public Health Journal. Please stay tuned. Welcome to A Public Health Journal, a program that explores public health issues facing our society today and tomorrow. The host of the show is Dr. Ed Ellinger, Commissioner of Health for the State of Minnesota. A Public Health Journal is sponsored by the Minnesota Department of Health and the Hennepin County Human Services and Public Health Department, all working together towards the goal of healthy people living in healthy communities. Welcome to A Public Health Journal. Income is the greatest predictor of health. As one income increases, the chances of being healthy increases. Because our economy is such a major determinant of our state's overall health, I thought it important to talk about what's being done to create a robust and healthy economy in Minnesota. Besides talking about what's being done today, we'll be looking at the risks and opportunities that lie ahead for our state's economy. Joining me in that discussion is Katie clark Sieben, Commissioner of the Department of Employment and Economic Development, or DEED. DEED is the state agency dedicated to growing Minnesota's economy and building and strengthening a world-class workforce. Under Commissioner Clark Sieben's leadership, DEED has partnered with communities and businesses to support business growth and greater opportunities for workers across the state. Katie, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. And most people, you know, if they think about a public health program and having somebody on from employment and economic development, they say, what's going on? But as I mentioned in my introduction, mm -hmm. you know, income and wages and economy are the greatest predictor of health. So I thought mm -hmm. we'd talk about like what you do and, mm -hmm. and what's going on in the state. So as a start, you know, what is DEED, the Department of Employment and Economic Development, and what does it do? So DEED is um, one of the state's larger agencies, and we do a variety of things. Um, we are focused on economic development, so we are recruiting businesses to the state from outside of our borders, outside of um, our state's borders, outside of our country. Um, we are focused on how do we increase exports from our state and encourage foreign direct investment inward, and on the employment side, we have 47 workforce centers located across the state that are serving all Minnesotans that walk through those doors. So most often unemployed Minnesotans or underemployed Minnesotans looking for new job um, opportunities, new career opportunities. Uh, we also provide vocational rehabilitation services mm -hmm. to our disabled population, um, serve uh, uh, state services for the blind, um, administer unemployment insurance. So um, we do many activities all focused on one mission of increasing our economic competitiveness for Minnesota. So you really have a global view and a very individual view at the same time. We absolutely do and we know that in today's competitive economy um, we need to be globally focused. We need to be thinking outside of our borders. 75% um, of the world's buying power are outside of the United States borders and so um, we need to be focused on, on markets outside of the U.S. as well as focused on our, our cities and communities across the state here that have some real challenges. So you must have a lot of different partnerships within the state and, and throughout the country. We absolutely do. Uh, we focus on partnering with the business sector, uh, the private sector across the state, um, numerous partnerships with nonprofits that focus on workforce development across the state, 
um, philanthropic organizations, the list is very long. Right, and I'm just, th <laughs> I'm just thinking about our cabinet members. Mm -hmm. You must partner with agriculture and pollution control and transportation and, and all of those, those things because they all have some relationship to our economy, I suspect. We do. Uh, DEED is a part of the Minnesota Business First Stop, which has nine agencies that are all very focused on how do we provide the best customer service to businesses across the state. So it includes uh, many that you just mentioned, Department of Agriculture, um, Pollution Control Agency, Department of Commerce, Revenue, Transportation, Education. So. Um, we are all focused on, uh, as you are as well, how do we strengthen the economy here in Minnesota. Yeah. So how is the economy doing in Minnesota? Well, we have a fantastic story to tell at the moment, um, and it's because of the productive, hard-working uh, workforce that we have here in the state. Our unemployment rate is at 4.7%, which is among the lowest in the country. The national average currently is 6.6%. Um, so that's a fantastic result. We've added 190,000 jobs since the low point of the recession. Actually, I have a slide here that, that oh. shows you know, sort of what's going on with mm -hmm. uh, uh, the employment growth, and we'll put that on the screen. So tell us about what we're seeing here, because I think it fits in with what you're talking about. So we have, our state's added 190,000 jobs since the low point of the recession, and we are now at a point where we have more Minnesotans working than ever before. Uh, 2.8 million Minnesotans are working today, which is the highest number we've ever seen. Um, and we have uh, job vacancies that exist across the state. Um, we had the fifth fastest GDP growth rate in 2012 among all states, and Forbes magazine rated us the eighth best state for business mm. in 2013. We jumped 12 spots on that list from the previous year, which was the largest jump of any state. Um, so there are many positive indicators um, on our economy, and it's a result of the fantastic workforce that we have here mm -hmm. in the state. Do we always, as that slide showed, you know, that mm -hmm. when the, the U.S. economy tanked, Minnesota's economy did the same thing, and when it rose, are we totally dependent on the, the U.S. economy, or are there times when we are out of sync with the, the U.S. economy? Uh, there are times when we are out of sync uh, with the U.S. economy. Minnesota rebounded from the recession much faster um, than many states, and it's because of the diverse economy that we have here in the state. Um, we are not reliant on any one industry in our state. We have a nice mix of financial services to corporate headquarters to IT to medical devices, um, where if one industry is having more of a, a challenge in that moment, the other industries are still um, rising and and keeping our economy strong mm -hmm. and so that's um, one reason why we've we have fared the recession much better mm -hmm. now certainly employment is one indicator are there other indicators about the strength of our economy like the number of kinds of mm -hmm. employers productivity mm -hmm. out, outputs outcomes absolutely so other uh, <coughs> indicators that we track we look at um, exports as one example and we we have had um, record export growth um, in recent quarters and um, are continuing to see that trend rise. Um, there are, are small and mid-sized companies across our state that are figuring out how to export their product into markets outside of the U.S. and there's great demand for Minnesota's high quality products in many markets around the world. Um, we also uh, look at wages. Um, I mean, there are, there are many economic indicators that we are tracking on a regular basis, comparing how are we doing with other states and where do we need to remain focused. Are you, are you seeing businesses throughout the country saying, there's a good economy, there's a healthy place to be, here's a place where we want to go? Is, are you getting that kind of feedback from folks throughout the country? We are. Our business and community development team at DEED, which houses all of the state's economic development incentive programs, and they're the first point of contact with a business um, when they're considering an expansion or, or a relocation and looking for um, a new location for their business. Uh, that team is the busiest they've been in over a decade at least. Um, some of that is rebounding from the recession, but we do believe that uh, the story that Minnesota has to tell is getting out there. Um, we do have a very high quality of life here in the state. Um, we have thriving businesses across the state and our, our educated workforce um, is is uh, top in the nation. I mean, we, we are known for having a well-educated, productive workforce. And that's one of the main reasons why we hear companies taking a look at Minnesota and considering moving their business here. Right. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the unemployment and some of the other challenges we have. But first, we need to take a little break. We'll be back right after this message.
Time to wake up. <laughs> got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Don't forget, you've got a job to do today. Hey, Mom. I got the job. <laughs> Thanks. Got the job. Welcome aboard. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. You get to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Welcome back. We're talking about Minnesota's economy with Katie Clark Sieben, the Commissioner of the Department of Employment and Economic Development. We're talking about how the economy impacts health. And Katie, in, in this first segment, you mentioned a little bit about unemployment and the fact that we have a low unemployment rate. And I want to I want to dig into that a little bit mm -hmm. more deeply because I think most people, you know, I, on an individual level, you say I, I need to be employed. Mm -hmm. My job is really important. And if I'm unemployed, you know, we've just come out of a little mm -hmm. period of major unemployment. We've heard all of the things that have bad things that have happened. So, mm -hmm. I have a couple of slides that give us some information about unemployment in this state. And the first slide shows us our unemployment rate compared to the United mm -hmm. States. And as you mentioned, it looks like we're doing quite well. So, explain a little bit of what's mm -hmm. going on in this slide. Well, we are uh, doing well at the moment. Our overall unemployment rate in the state is 4.7 percent, and the U.S. Uh, average at the moment is 6.6 percent. Um, so, fantastic results uh, can, compared to many states across the United States. Mm -hmm. And and traditionally, we've been above the the this, the country uh, pretty much uh, as long as we've been around on this slide, right? We have. Um, we, we typically have lower unemployment rates um, than the rest of the country. We came out of the recession much quicker um, than many states. Um, so that, that is something that, that we have to be proud of here in Minnesota. All right. Now the next, next slide I show, you know, shows by mm -hmm. racial breakdown. And, and this is one where we've got an increasingly diverse state. Uh, mm -hmm. We're now up to 17 to 18 percent of our population. Mm -hmm. Our population is of color. And it, it shows a little different picture with this. Tell us what's going on here. Well, while our overall unemployment rate is 4.7 percent, if you are unemployed, it's 100 percent for yourself. Um, and we know that not every community in the state of Minnesota is, is at that 4.7 percent rate. Um, for the uh, white population, it's around 4.3 percent. Um, but for the African American population, it's closer to 15 percent. And yeah, it's actually... And that's the top line on this, this graph. It's actually increased over the last year from 13.8 percent up to 15, um, which was not the trend we were hoping to see. Um, for our Hispanic Latino population, it's around uh, 6.5 percent at the moment. So, um, in order for our economy to continue to be competitive and continue to grow, um, we are going to need all Minnesotans um, to be working in our state. Um, we, we know that we will be facing a labor shortage, um, and we need to ensure that we're connecting all Minnesotans with educational opportunities, training, and employment opportunities um, where they can be successful, where they can um, have a, a wage that is sustaining for their family. Um, and, and can have a high quality of life here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So what's the story behind these disparities? What, mm -hmm. what do you look at as, in terms mm -hmm. of the kind of reasons this is mm -hmm. occurring in Minnesota? Well, one indicator that uh, we very closely track is we work with our Department of Education and look at our high school graduation rates and how are each of these communities doing um, with graduating from high school. Uh, we do have some, some very positive results from this last uh, year's graduating class in that we saw all communities across the state um, increased their uh, graduation rate. So we had, um, I believe it's 78 percent of all high school students um, graduated across the state, which was up from 75 percent. Mm -hmm. Um, which I know Commissioner Castilius is very proud of, 
and we had more African American, more Hispanic, more Latino, more white students um, graduating than we did in the previous year. So we see that as a positive indicator. We know there's direct correlation with high school graduation rates and educational attainment um, to employment rates and wage rates. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, an, an indicator that we track very closely. Mm -hmm. So this must be a long-term investment because, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, you invest in education, you know, preschool, you know, K-12, it takes a little while to, for those numbers to show. So this is a long-term investment? This is a long-term investment, but one that we know is critically important. Um, Governor Dayton and the legislature have made some key investments in um, early childhood, in K-12, in higher education recently. Um, but we know that our competitive advantage here in Minnesota has always been our productive workforce mm -hmm. and our well-educated workforce. And in order to remain competitive in the future, it's those investments that we need to continue making to make sure that we're growing the well-trained, skilled workforce that we're going to need for the jobs that are in demand mm -hmm. for the future. And I know we also, we're a state of immigrants, and we've been mm -hmm. really having a lot of immigrants come to the state mm -hmm. over the last 20 years, and they must propose a different kind of challenge. Um, a challenge and an opportunity. I think um, our economy has benefited from many ways um, from the immigrant populations that have moved into the state and um, we're seeing many immigrant populations that, that have recently moved into Minnesota are very entrepreneurial, um, are starting small businesses across the state and new enterprises. Um, it does present uh, new, new challenges for our K-12 education. Um, system and thinking about the various languages that that are now in our, our schools um, but I think ultimately this is strengthening our economy and um, from a an educational perspective from um, diversifying our economy and and seeing new businesses um, grow so it's um, it, there's a changing face in Minnesota and that's that's a very positive thing to see. Yeah. And certainly who, who owns businesses, who's mm -hmm. starting businesses is really important. What are you doing mm -hmm. in terms of minority owned mm -hmm. businesses and de business development mm -hmm. in that area? So we have a few competitive grant programs at DEED um, that serve uh, various communities. One of those is our business competitive grant program, which is focused on um, giving grants to organizations, to nonprofit organizations that serve minority owned businesses um, specifically. Um, so, and we also have an urban initiative uh, uh, program here in the Twin Cities region that is also focused on that effort. Um, so we think that this is an area of the economy that, that um, can grow. And, and just a few weeks ago, um, we were talking with the legislature about our angel tax credit program, which is also focused on new innovation, entrepreneurs across the state and helping them access capital to develop mm -hmm. their product and bring it to market. So most of the businesses uh, that receive investments through that program have one or two employees are developing a product maybe in their garage or their basement, um, but could have the potential to be the next Medtronic or 3M. Mm -hmm. um, so we know not every business in that program is going to succeed and grow to that level, um, but we believe one of them will. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are making some, some key investments in entrepreneurs and new innovation across our state. Good, well, you're mentioning a whole bunch of new opportunities, yes. and I wanna talk about that in the next segment, but first, we need to take another little break. We'll be back right after this message. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back. We're talking about Minnesota's economy and its impact on the state's health with Katie Clark Sieben from DEED, the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Katie, uh, in this last segment, I do want to talk about you know what what you're seeing. What are the the sort of the threats and opportunities, or the the risks and the barriers, and and what we should really be looking at over mm -hmm. the next ten years? Because I mean, like I said, our economy is a, such a huge mm -hmm. part of of what creates the culture in the state, creates the health in the state. Mm -hmm. So what are what are some of the threats that mm -hmm. you see that that we're having mm -hmm. to face? 
Well, we know that by the year 2020, we will face a labor shortage of around 86,000 people. Oh, actually, we have um, a slide that shows perfect. a little bit about that. <laughs> very, very fortunate that, 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 that you know, labor, we got an aging population. We have an aging population. Um, our baby boomer generation is now retiring and the generations to come are not uh, as large as the baby boomer population. And so um, we know that first and foremost, we need to connect every Minnesotan with an employment opportunity. Part of that is ensuring they're receiving the strong education and training um, need for those jobs, um, but that we are communicating what are the jobs um, that we're seeing that are in demand and making sure that our educational and training programs are connecting Minnesotans and preparing them for those job opportunities. Um, so as we talked about in the last segment, um, we have some work to do with a high unemployment rate for our African-American population, um, higher than average unemployment rate for Hispanic or, or Latino population, um, and, and any unemployed Minnesotan. Um, we have uh, programs in place at DEED, such as the Fast Track program, is a great example um, where we will uh, work with an individual who is unemployed or underemployed, um, typically a low income situation, and help them get the training that they need to get onto the ladder of success to a job that's in demand and, and will give um, them future opportunities for advancement and promotion um, in their careers. So that's, that's one way that we're doing it, but there, there are others. Um, but we need to remain focused on, um, with that labor shortage, how are we getting all Minnesotans into job opportunities? And we need to start thinking about how are we attracting new Minnesotans to our state, knowing that uh, we do have fantastic job growth happening across the state. We have positions available, uh, but we will be facing this labor shortage. So mm -hmm. how are we uh, promoting and positioning our state as a high quality of life, a great place to live and, and raise a family with a high um, educational system and great job opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Now I know some other states are investing in certain kinds of things, high tech or you know research parks mm -hmm. and things. Are, are we finding that, are we making the investments in Minnesota that are appropriate for, to be remain competitive in this new economy mm -hmm. that's developing? I believe that we are. Uh, this past legislative session, our leaders up at the Capitol invested 30 million in the new in the Minnesota Investment Fund, otherwise known as MIF, um, which is a tool that we've been using for the past 30 years to attract companies to our state. For every one dollar of public money spent on that program, we've seen a return of 33 dollars of private uh, leverage. Um, so it's, it's had a fantastic return, and we created a new Minnesota Job Creation Fund program this past um, legislative session that's a pay for performance program focused on um, recruiting high quality, high paying jobs to the state and a, a company's eligible for a rebate based on the wages of those jobs and the level of private investment that the company's making here. Mm -hmm. So as, uh, as those tools are not specific to any one industry, um, we are able at DEED in, in our um, labor market information um, and what we know about our economy, um, as we see co opportunities arise with companies looking to relocate or expand, we are targeting certain businesses with certain industries and trying to attract um, their attention towards Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one industry, we're working on recruiting a variety of, of industries to our state, um, but we are looking for businesses that, that have um, some sort of competitive advantage or, or are industries that we think will continue to grow and provide high, high wages in the future. Yeah, well, and, and, and certainly in the health area, I mean, health is about 18% of our economy and we've got Mayo Clinic and the University of Minnesota and you know, great health plans uh, and uh, you know, device manufacturers. Uh, do you see this as an opportunity for Minnesota to capture a, a, a big part of our economy? It's a huge opportunity and we're, it already is such a large part of our economy. Our recent export growth is largely attributed, attributed to uh, growth in the medical device sector in our state and exporting those products um, worldwide. Um, with the new Destination Medical Center development underway in Rochester, we think this will have a, a major impact on Minnesota's economy, as well as new developments underway at the University of Minnesota 
in bringing new research, new technologies uh, to market and allowing students to be more entrepreneurial with uh, developments and research that they do at the university and turning those into businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so we are already known for this strong medical device sector in the state and I anticipate it's only going to grow. Right. On the flip side of that, mm -hmm. I, I recently was at a conference where a, a major CEO said that she mm -hmm. wouldn't put a, pl she chose the place where she mm -hmm. was going to start her expansion of her business based on obesity rates. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. knowing that if their mm -hmm. obesity is down, that means it's mm -hmm. a healthier place and so they have healthier workforce. Mm -hmm. And certainly we're one of the healthiest states. Do you use that as a selling tool for businesses? We absolutely do. And you will know this information better than me, but I believe we're the fifth health, the healthiest we're the state. We're the third. We're the, the third. third. We're okay, the third. see, I knew you would know we, it better than up. me. Um, but we do talk about the quality of life um, and the uh, access to high quality health care that we have here in the state when we're talking with businesses, recruiting them um, to the state and helping them to explain if they move their employees here, what, what life we can offer. Um, and that, that is an important um, uh, attracting piece for businesses and, and something that, um, that they are thinking about when they, when they relocate their business. Yeah. Well, I know, as I mentioned, you know, income and health, and jobs and health are just interrelated and, and they, they affect each other. You know, a, health, a healthy economy, healthy people. Healthy people helps to have a healthy economy. So it's great having mm -hmm. you as a partner on, on Dayton's Cabinet working on some of these issues. So good luck. And uh, there's a lot more we can talk about, so I'll have to invite you back to talk about all of the other things that are going on in your shop. Thank you. And I'll be back with a closing comment right after this message. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. DMC, life in your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb, just keeping it real. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. When 19th century industrialization drove workers from farms and home workshops into urban areas and factory work, our economic system changed dramatically. This change was particularly devastating for poor families and children. Working conditions were unregulated and often unsafe, leading to tens of thousands of work-related deaths. Millions of children were forced to work long hours and hazardous conditions at low wages because their poor families desperately needed the income to supplement the parents' low wages. While factory owners thrived, the reality for children was poor health and loss of educational opportunities. Today, our economic system is again changing rapidly and dramatically. We are moving from an industrial to an informational economy, where education and training are essential for economic success. And like a century ago, low-income families, populations of color, and children are at greatest risk of not benefiting from these changes. That's why, to be successful, the state's economic development activities need to be built on a strong educational system that meets the needs of all children. If low-income groups don't get the educational opportunities available to the more well-to-do, they will be hard-pressed to escape from the poverty that is so devastating to the health of their body, mind, and spirit. High-quality education for all is the best economic development tool we have. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you can join us again next time on a Public Health Journal.